This is Kevin at Pope with the Pope's Perspective and the spoiler half of my review for Avengers Endgame. Alright, so, now for those of you who have already watched my main review, I apologize for not talking about anything about the plot. Just talking about my opinion. Um, I'm sorry if that review really didn't help you. I just wanted to get my thoughts out. But this is the review where I'm going to talk more about the plot more about things I things that worked and things that didn't work. So let's let's go into some spoiler talk for Avengers Endgame. So first half of the film, um, I want to get out. Um, I loved like Thanos was such a great villain, and I do think we have some great Thanos stuff in this film, but after everything, after everything that happened, and they just, it, it seems so anticlimactic, they just storm into, storm into Thanos, and then Thor just ends up killing him, and he's just kind of, you know, but you know what, Thanos wasn't about, like, Thanos achieved what he wanted to achieve. He got the Infinity Stones, and snap, whapped out. Wipe, wiped out, wiped out half of the population uh, across the whole universe, not just Earth, everywhere. And then he destroyed the stones because he didn't want to be tempted, which I think is very admirable, and that makes sense for the character of who Thanos was. So, but I still felt it was so... And he was so built up and so good in Infinity War, and then... I guess all they really needed to know at that point is like, oh, the stones are gone. And so it's like, oh, this great villain, and now he's reduced to nothing, and like, oh, goodbye. Oh, there's a snap again. That wasn't a snap, final snap. That was just a snap. That was a random tangent. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, just, I just felt that was a very anti-climatic for Thanos, because he was so well executed in the first film. Now, of course, we go back in time, and we get more Thanos. So we get back in time Thanos, and then they find future, they, they find out future Nebula has come to the past, and so Thanos reappears, but it's past, it's past Thanos. And Thanos was still a threat. I, I really, and there was, it just left me at this, I'm like, okay, so they're finding past Thanos, Okay. Okay, they're fighting past past Thanos and they go through it, but I don't know, it just wasn't as satisfying to me. I mean, I don't know his present Thanos, if they hadn't killed him, would have gone to that effort because he achieved what he wanted to achieve. Also, I was I really felt I felt let, let down with the Hulk. I mean, I I, 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 I know it, it was it was achieved, like okay, he he became at peace with the Hulk, and it's like, okay, we're together, but I didn't feel like the Hulk was in this movie. I felt like it was Bruce Banner in the body of the Hulk. And so, like, after the whole Hulk struggle in Infinity War, which was really good, and apparently I was completely wrong, Hulk wasn't scared, Hulk wasn't running away, he was just tired of so apparently from interviews with the Russo brothers, Hulk was, Hulk was just tired of like, okay, you need me to come in and save the day. Okay, fine, I'll come in. But it's like, he's more like, do it yourself. I'm, I'm sick of this. So I'm like, okay, I get that. And I really enjoyed that Hulk struggle in there. But there's so much we lost in the five years. Like we don't know all of what happened. We didn't get to see those five years. And so we just, we never see the resolution happen. Just next time we see Bruce Banner, he has become one with the Hulk, which I do, I really like that aspect. I thought that was, I'm like, okay, he's come to terms with the Hulk. But I didn't think, I didn't feel like Hulk was in this film. It's like Hulk just let Bruce Banner take over his body. It was Bruce Banner in Hulk's body, which, I don't know. I was really weirded out by that. If, I don't know if, I don't know, in some ways he just, I felt like he was more like he was Shrek. It just, it's like a green Bruce Banner buffed up and 
I, I'm really at odds with that one. I mean, there was some funny stuff when they when they travel when they when they go back to New York from the first film, and they're like, okay, act like the Hulk, and he's like Hulk Smash, and he's doing a very poor job of being the Hulk. Like he's he's definitely not acting like the Hulk. So um, it would have been nice to have the Hulk's presence in the film. So because I. I don't feel like we had the Hulk in the film. It was, I, it was Bruce Banner in the Hulk's body, and like I said, the whole oneness in there. But it didn't, it didn't feel like a oneness to me. It just felt like Bruce Banner was taking over. So it, I don't know. I, I'm gonna go on to say it wasn't a oneness because it, it was Bruce Banner taking over the Hulk's body. It wasn't. Hulk and Bruce, because we didn't get any Hulk. We didn't get Hulk, 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 Hulk. So maybe it would have been more fun if they actually had him. He's he still heard Hulk in there. Maybe Hulk appeared here and there. I don't know. I guess I would have liked to have seen more Hulk. Maybe they could have done like with Split, where you have the different personalities come out at different times, and they could have had him go back and forth between Hulk and there, or kind of sharing, but it didn't feel like sharing with, it felt like it was Bruce Banner in Hulk's body, so I was disappointed in that. So it was, it was on the whole film, that was maybe a minor thing. So that's my thoughts. Some people may really like that aspect, and like I said, I like the idea of oneness with the Hulk, but I, it wasn't oneness with the Hulk, it was, he was completely taking over Hulk's body. Yeah, I guess I was really disappointed in that. Five years later and things have changed and they've kind of accepted their place and that things aren't going to, they're not going to be able to reverse what happened, so they're just moving on. And um, obviously Thor is not moved on very well. He's kind of just let himself, he's let go of himself and like, that was... <laughs> I don't know, that was, that was weird. It's like, oh my goodness, out of shape, out of shape, Thor. <laughs> he was still Thor, but Thor out of shape. But I guess I'm more okay with that. I mean, I personally prefer buff and uh, Thor, but he was definitely still Thor's personality. I mean, Thor, yeah, Thor. He was definitely Thor's personality. Um, um, I think the one I really enjoyed was um, with Tony Stark, that he does end up with Pepper Potts, and they have a daughter. So now, not only is, so now, Tony Stark has more to lose than he had before. He has a family, but also he's had a family to fight for. And so I really, it, it was really, it was really nice seeing that he got to have a family, that he got to have a daughter. And I enjoyed the little bit that we got to see with him and his daughter. And then of course, Captain America, Steve Rogers and Black Widow. I can't think of Black, Black Widow's name right now, but um, I, they're more of like still trying to move on, which, um, there's still a lot we don't know about Black Widow. And um, I guess we get this Black Widow movie and we'll get to learn more about her. She sacrifices herself for the Soul Stone. So any Black Widow we see is going to be prequel, but we could still get um, some prequel stuff and understand more about her history. So there's still a lot to learn about Black Widow. Um, and obviously Steve Rogers has already lost, he's lost Peggy Carter. He's lost Bucky. Um, he's lost. Dang it, I can't think of the guy's name. Falcon. I just know him as Falcon. Um, but he's lost all of the. He's lost these friends. He's still got. He's still got the other Avengers that are left. But he. He's definitely. He's already lost. So he's still trying to cope and move on. Um, um, and then of course Hawkeye. Lost his whole family. And he's just gone full on assassin. I'm not familiar with the comics. Um, uh, apparently, he's become this character that he becomes in the comics. I will say it. Hawkeye went badass in this film, and um, I was I've never been a big 
Hawkeye person. I just never really felt like he was a big part, but he he was definitely good in this film. And um, um, and then Ant Man, obviously, he provides the key to reversing Thanos' snap. Um, I just like doing that snap. So um, so they go. So we've got all of this. Like, okay, we've got the fi- the setup. Like, okay, the snap happened, and they've lost their population, and then they end up killing Thanos. And then five years later, and then you see where they are now, and they're trying, okay, they meet up back with Ant-Man, and like, can we do this? Like, we go, we go back, we get the stones, we reverse the snap, we can, we can reverse what happened. And it was slow getting up to this point. Like, some, some parts work better than others, but it was slow getting up to this point, and then... And then they get to the point where they go back, they, they figure it out and they're like, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna go back in time. We're gonna get the stones. We're gonna get the stones. We're gonna f- reverse the snap. Uh, okay. And so, and I actually was wondering if this was become like, I wonder if they're gonna go back in time. And they did. Um, and you know, they always have, there's always inconsistencies with time travel. Every time you play with time travel in films, there's always inconsistencies. And um, and it was actually funny. They actually talk about the different, they mentioned like so many different time travel films. It's like, oh, it's not la, oh, you're not Bill and Ted, Terminator. I can't remember what else they mentioned, but they mentioned these different, hot tub time machine. They mentioned all these different time travel. And it's like, oh, so you're saying that this doesn't work like Back to the Future? <laughs> Which I actually did like them calling out Back to the Future because I love the Back to the Future films. But time travel wise, there's so many inconsistencies. It goes all over the place. Um, and you're gonna get that with time travel. And does this film do that? Yes, it does. Um, so, um, but I do like them going back and it's all, it is always fun when you get a film, when you get a rebat, when you get a revisit previous scenes and you get to see things from a different perspective. And that is an element that is fun in time travel films. And I did really enjoy this film from that point. So when they started going back in time, I think that's where the film really picked up. And the film was really started, really started to get going at that, at that point. And I will say the film really started to get going at that point. Okay. And, um, but then I started like, (laughs) this is what you get. I'm not a scientist. I don't know time travel. I don't know the theories of time travel. Well, I've heard theories of time travel, so I've only time travel of what I've seen in movies and television or read in books or, um, and I mean like fantasy books. Um, so I don't, I don't know the plausibility of time travel. All I know is it's like, okay, Dr. Who, I was like, bibbly bobbly, bibbly bobbly, timey wimey, wibbly wobbly, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. And so that was pretty much their way of saying like, we can get away with whatever we want and Doctor Who does. Let's be honest, they do. Um, so there are inconsistencies. So I'm just like, oh, wait a minute. So they go back in time. If Thanos discovers that they're going back in time and discovers that he succeeded and now they're going back to revert everything and then he goes like, well, how does that affect Thanos in the future in the present day timeline? Or is it an alternate timeline that... We, the Thanos, we, like I said, it, it gets crazy. It gets crazy. So I'm just thinking like, so if Thanos gets the stones back, what, what effect does that have? If Thanos goes back, but he knows what's going to happen, is he going to play things out the same way? And the other thing, this is a nitpicky thing, and sorry if I'm unsentimental or if this is a little hard, because this, this was a, this was a hard, this was a, emotional scene. So I'm sorry if I'm nitpicky on this emotional scene. Um, When, 
when Black Widow sacrifices herself for the soul sto- in exchange for the soul stone and it uses the exact same music when Thanos sacrificed Gamora in Infinity War and I'm like I know this is the soul stone I know that this is sacrificed for the soul stone but that's Gamora that's the music to be Gamora when Gamora's life is being sacrificed for the soul stone it needs to be different not the same I was I don't know. It, it's a little, it's a little nitpick on that. But when I hear that music, um, I have the Infinity War soundtrack because I loved the music from Infinity War. And every time I hear that music, I just feel for Gamora. That's that's the sacrifice of Gamora, not Gamora's sacrifice. But, you know, but that's when Gamora is sacrificed for the stone. And I wish they would have done different music cues for Natasha because Natasha I knew I would remember her name Natasha so um a little nitpick okay that's a little nitpick so that's really not over so now let's go back to the time so essentially they go back and they get the stones and then Thanos from the past ends up fighting them and I will say this is that was epic it was an epic battle from the first film from the Infinity War although I will say this Infinity War the battle it did remind me of other great epic battles such as like the Lord of the Rings and the battle at Gondor um, but nonetheless that was a great battle and this battle felt like it's its own thing and then after everything is reversed back and everybody starts coming back that was a great moment and that was just like huge there was like so many it was just like everybody we've seen from every film was there fighting and coming back and i've never seen such a huge army and that was that was epic. That was that was like wow. That that was that was something. Um, and then of course Tony's sacrifice. Now we've known that um, both Captain America, um, Chris Evans, and um, Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man that their contracts they had not they did not renew their contracts after this film so we we pretty much we all knew that this was going to be an ending point for their characters so it was always for me I was on the line I'm like we're gonna lose Iron Man or Captain America Um, I was always thinking it was gonna be Captain America and then um, I remember in the moment in Infinity War and I may have talked about this in my original review when Thanos kills Tony, but then it's reversed, and I'm like, oh, they they went for it, they killed Tony, wow, I didn't know they were going to kill Iron Man, and then they didn't kill Iron Man, because Doctor Strange gave him the stone, the, Doctor Strange gave him the time stone in exchange for Tony's life. And so, at the time, I was thinking, like, Ooh, they went for it. They're actually we're gonna we're gonna experience loss, and then we didn't, and so it did kind of feel like a letdown in there because I'm like, oh, we haven't experienced loss in these films. It's not going to feel like a loss because, let's be honest, when with the snap, we knew that Spider Man and Black Panther and the Guardians of the Galaxy and all of these characters were coming back. We knew they were coming back. Um, so for me, it, it didn't feel like a loss. I'm like, they're going to reverse it. We know they're going to reverse it. Um, so in this film, Tony sacrifices himself to reverse the stone, to get, to reverse the snap. And so it's like Doctor Strange knew that it was going to be Tony. That's why Doctor Strange 
gave Thanos the stone in exchange for Tony's life because he knew that the only possible outcome to win was Tony. He knew it had to be, it was going to be Tony. It had to be Tony. But what a wallop. I don't cry at movies. I, I hardly ever cry at movies. Like the last time, the last movie I can think of I cried at was My Girl. I cried in my I cried in my girl. Um, that's the last time I can think of him watching a movie that I cried. Um, I cried at this film. I cried at Tony's funeral. I cried. After I cried when you saw his daughter. And I just thought to me, it's like this is Tony's daughter. She's lost her father. And I cried more. Like I, I had stopped crying and then I cried again. It just and um for me who's not a crier or I cry, I feel I feel emotions. It just they don't always come out. So for for them for me to cry during a movie, that is an achievement when a movie has gotten me to cry. That, that's, I feel emotions in movies, I, but I don't cry a lot. I don't try to stop myself from crying, I just don't. But this film, I was just sniveling. It just, it got to me. Um, and the thing is, we've been invested in these characters for over 10 years. It started with the first Iron Man. And I, for one, never would have guessed that from that Iron Man film, 11 years later, that we would lose Iron Man. Iron Man is, even though Iron Man is a fictional character, Iron Man Even though Iron Man is a fictional character, um, Iron Man's been a character in the comics for decades. Um, most of the world did not really know a lot about Iron Man until the, these movies. So these past 10, 11 years, we have gotten to know Iron Man. We have grown to love Iron Man. So much so that if it feels like a loss in our world. It's hard to imagine an Avengers film without Iron Man. Since that first film, I, Tony Stark has made an appearance in 10 Marvel films. So, um, if I'm not mistaken, Infinity War was the 20th Marvel film, so we're at 22 now. So he's appeared in almost half of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films. Some roles are not huge roles, like his, his cameo in The Incredible Hulk was at the very end of an end cap scene, so maybe like just almost half a second to that whole film, but he still appeared in that film. Iron Man has been a part of this universe from the beginning, and now he's gone. And so it is, it is a loss because we've grown to love these films. So this film achieved that emotional level. And then Captain America, um, his was actually kind of a sweet little ending where he goes back and returns all the stones to their original locations, back where they were originally. So nothing's changed in the future time frame in that regard. And then he just decides to stay and settle. And so I'm like, and he ends up with Peggy Carter, which I'm like, oh, cool. 
um, I guess it's got to be in secret because it's like the um, with Peggy Carter and the military, uh, they know who Captain America. Well, wait a minute. In the first Captain America film, um, he was a big deal. He was like a national hero. So he was known in there and then he went missing for, um, was it 70 years? I'm too lazy to do the math. So I guess he's got to be in hiding because he's still a public known figure. Maybe not as present day is because... So, because maybe he was just a blip in history. It's like, hey, Captain America, this was a cool thing he did. Oh, he's in the ice, and now he's frozen, and now he's gone. And then he comes back in the future, and then he comes back. So maybe they're not thinking about Captain America, but I don't know. I, guess, I would still think he would have to be a little recluse, and obviously Peggy Carter, which got me thinking back to Winter Soldier, because you've got that scene where, you, where he talks with Peggy Carter, and um, who's now old now. And um, I guess that Peggy Carter knows that, um, well, at least if that Peggy Carter knew in the time frame, I think it, it could still work out um, that she knows that he goes back in time, but this is, I don't, I don't know. Um, and she has dementia, so maybe she doesn't, I don't know, time travel's complicated, but it's, it's still a, a sweet little thing. I, I thought that was a sweet, sweet that he gets to go back and he gets to live a life um and then we see old captain america and he passes on his shield to which has got to be a new shield because thanos smashed his shield t to pieces so it's got to be a new shield um that he gives to falcon um i thought it, i always thought it was going to be the Winter Soldier, that Bucky was going to be the next Captain America. I know both Falcon and Bucky, um, in the comics, they both take on the mantle of Captain America. I thought it was going to be Bucky first, but I guess I guess Falcon's going to take on the mantle. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, if we if we see more Captain America films with, with Falcon, I'd be okay with that. Um, it'll never be the same as it was with Chris Evans, but... These these films are moving on. Um, I don't know where they're gonna go th go from here. Like this was such a epic send off. Um, even though this film had problems, I don't like I said. I don't think it move. It was as smooth as Infinity War. The execution in in Infinity War was so well put together, and um, I don't. Infinity War didn't have as an, didn't Infinity War didn't leave me with questionings of um, well Infinity War left me questions of what's going to happen next it didn't leave me with questions of logic the, that's more of where this film like left me with questions of logic I'm like well wait a minute how does how 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 is Nebula still there if her past self has been destroyed or does Thanos this is Thanos past gone now too so how does that affect present Thanos who's gone anyway so did Thanos die twice I don't I don't I don't know it's all complicated in that um it, it just but it was it was a in most regards it was a satisfying send-off and I do think it's worth seeing um like I said in my other review I don't know if I'd watch it as much as Infinity War. Um, I just, Infinity War was so well put together. Um, but the end game is a cap off of this chapter in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Who knows what's coming next? Who knows? I don't know if there's any way ever to top this. Maybe that we never thought there was any way to get to something like this anyway. So maybe we would have never thought that this would have been something to top. But that it's still an achievement. Um, of, I still like Infinity War more. Okay? The whole arc of Thanos and that they actually did not win at the end of Infinity War, I thought that was very a very, um, it just left you with something. Like, some of the movies, like I said, The Empire Strikes Back, like, we know what happens in Return of the Jedi and they end the resolution. And Return of the Jedi is a great film, but it isn't near as good as Empire Strikes Back. Um, so, um, so that's my thoughts on Avengers 
Endgame. And that's the Pope's perspective.